On the morning of September 1, 1859, English astronomer Richard Carrington was observing sunspots through dark filters around 11 a.m. Suddenly, he witnessed a burst of intense white light emanating from the area of the sunspots. This event lasted approximately five minutes. However, what ensued about 17 hours later was even more extraordinary. A massive solar storm struck the Earth's magnetic field, causing it to tremble. This was not an ordinary storm. It was a geomagnetic storm of unprecedented strength. Telegraph systems across Europe and North America malfunctioned, with operators receiving shocks and machines operating erratically, even when unplugged. Auroras, typically confined to polar regions, illuminated skies as far south as Cuba and Hawaii, turning night into day. According to reports, gold miners in the Rocky Mountains were awakened by the unusual brightness and proceeded to prepare breakfast at 1 a.m., mistaking the sun for having risen on a cloudy morning, this event, now famously dubbed the Carrington Event, stands as the most potent geomagnetic storm in recorded history. It served as a stark reminder of the sun's latent power and underscored our planet's susceptibility to its cosmic whims. Fast forward to today, 15 solar cycles later, and we find ourselves on the cusp of yet another solar spectacle, the impending premature solar maximum and the anticipated reversal of the sun's magnetic field. As the sun hurtles towards the zenith of its 11-year cycle, it portends heightened solar flares, sunspots, and coronal mass ejections. While we admire the potential for stunning auroral displays, there's apprehension regarding our technology-dependent society. The solar maximum also coincides with the Artemis mission, humanity's return to the moon after more than half a century. So what does the upcoming solar maximum hold for our planet in the months ahead? What anomalies in this solar cycle is NASA concerned about? And most crucially, will the heightened solar activity pose a risk to the lives of the astronauts of the Artemis mission on the moon? Everything on Earth owes its existence to the sun as our primary energy source. Although the sun may seem unchanging from our perspective, rising in the morning and setting at night, a cycle that has persisted throughout human history, up close, it reveals itself as a dynamic sphere of plasma adorned with sunspots, flares, and other features like prominences and filaments that can dwarf our planet. The Sun is a colossal sphere of hot gas that is constantly evolving, following a discernible pattern. On average, every 11 years, the Sun undergoes a cycle of heightened and diminished activity known as the Solar Cycle or Schwaber Cycle. We are currently witnessing the 25th cycle of such activity since systematic records began in 1755. But how did scientists detect these changes in the sun's activity over time? The key to this revelation lies in sunspots. Sunspots are transient dark areas on the sun's surface, appearing darker because they are cooler than the surrounding regions. The temperature at the center of a sunspot ranges from 3,000 to 4,500 Kelvin, significantly cooler compared to the surrounding area's temperature of about 5,800 Kelvin. These sunspots are caused by intense magnetic activity and can sometimes be as large as Earth. When astronomers began regularly monitoring these sunspots, they noticed a fascinating pattern. The number of sunspots fluctuated over a cycle of approximately 11 years. They also noted variations in the size, coverage, and locations of sunspots on the sun's surface. A solar cycle commences with a few sunspots, termed the solar minimum. As more sunspots emerge, the cycle culminates in a peak known as the solar maximum. Subsequently, the number of sunspots diminishes, signifying the cycle's conclusion. Another fascinating observation is the spatial distribution of sunspots. Initially, sunspots tend to manifest at mid-latitudes on the sun, 
but as the cycle progresses, they migrate closer to the equator. This migration generates a distinctive pattern resembling a butterfly when represented graphically, hence termed the butterfly diagram. This diagram serves as a visual aid in understanding the cyclic nature of solar activity. Traditionally, astronomers primarily monitored solar activity by observing sunspot behavior. However, with technological advancements, they identified two additional phenomena that vary throughout a solar cycle. Firstly, the solar magnetic field, crucial for driving the sun's dynamic processes, undergoes a complete reversal of polarity during each cycle. This entails that the solar magnetic north switches places with the south and vice versa. The pole reversal typically occurs around a solar maximum, signifying the conclusion of the maximum phase and the transition to the minimum phase of the cycle, marking the cycle's midpoint significantly. This phenomenon remains one of the most intriguing unsolved mysteries in solar physics, as we still lack a complete understanding of why the magnetic field undergoes polarity reversal throughout the solar cycle. While the reason for polarity reversal remains elusive, one aspect of the Sun may play a significant role, its non-uniform rotation. The Sun rotates at varying speeds at different latitudes, with slower rotation at the poles compared to the equator, a phenomenon known as differential rotation. It is hypothesized that the Sun's rapid differential rotation causes the plasma to drag magnetic field lines, resulting in them becoming tangled and twisted as they reach the surface and give rise to sunspots. The presence of sunspots and other instabilities further weakens the field lines, eventually reducing them to zero and providing an opportunity for them to rearrange and reappear at the poles with opposite polarity. Despite being a regular and predictable event, the mechanism behind polarity reversal continues to intrigue scientists. It remains one of the most intriguing unsolved problems in solar physics. Another aspect of the Sun that undergoes changes with the solar cycle is its overall activity, which includes solar wind, solar flares, and coronal mass ejections. This activity peaks at the solar maximum and reaches its nadir at the solar minimum. As a result of these discoveries, monitoring solar cycles now involves assessing solar activity and polarity reversal in addition to counting sunspots. However, does every solar cycle exhibit the same intensity and duration? Not exactly. Solar cycles have varied in length, with some lasting as short as nine years and others as long as 14 years since we began closely observing the Sun. This suggests that the 11-year period is an average duration for the Sun to complete its cycle of activity. Furthermore, each solar cycle is unique in terms of its intensity. This is typically measured by the total number of sunspots. However, there have been anomalous periods in the history of solar observation that have left scientists puzzled. One such period is the Maunder Minimum, which lasted from 1645 to 1715, during which very few sunspots were observed, about 50, compared to the usual 40,000 to 50,000. This period of low solar activity coincided with the Little Ice Age, during which the North Atlantic region experienced colder than normal temperatures. Another notable period, the Dalton Minimum, occurred from 1790 to 1830 and also saw a decrease in sunspot activity, correlating with lower global temperatures. This period spans solar cycles 4 through 7. In contrast, the modern maximum, spanning from 1933 to 2008, exhibited higher than usual solar activity, particularly starting around solar cycle 19. Currently, we are in solar cycle 25, and it's proving to be unexpected. Based on past cycles, scientists anticipated this one to be mild. However, 
the sun's activity so far is not aligning with those expectations, once again highlighting the dynamic and unpredictable nature of our star. The current solar cycle has proven to be more intense than previously anticipated and is reaching its peak earlier than expected. When this cycle began in December 2019, forecasts predicted a peak in July 2025 with around 115 sunspots. However, the NOAA Space Weather Prediction Center has updated its forecast, now expecting the peak between January and October 2024, with an estimated 137 to 173 sunspots. This change in prediction underscores the dynamic nature of solar activity and its inherent unpredictability. Understanding the consequences of this increased intensity and early peak requires a closer examination of X-class solar flares. Solar flares are powerful bursts of electromagnetic radiation from the Sun's atmosphere, triggered by the reconnection of strong magnetic fields. The Sun's complex magnetic field, which covers its interior, sometimes becomes twisted and distorted. When these magnetic fields stretch to the surface and reconnect, they can lead to the eruption of solar flares. Solar flares release tremendous energy, resulting in a solar eruption. Flares are categorized by their strength, with B-class being the smallest, followed by C, M, and then X, the most intense. Generally, C-class flares are too weak to significantly impact Earth. However, M-class flares can cause short-term radio blackouts at the poles and minor radiation storms, posing potential risks to astronauts. Each class is further divided into a scale from 1 to 9. The Carrington event in 1859 was associated with an X-class flare. Since the current solar cycle began, the first X-class solar flare occurred on July 3rd, 2021, leading to a significant radio blackout. This event marked the start of a series of X-class flares that have erupted from the Sun. In early 2022, a flare from the Sun was powerful enough to cause geomagnetic storms, resulting in the loss of 40 newly launched Starlink satellites. Then, on December 15, 2023, an X2.8 flare disrupted radio communications on Earth for two hours on New Year's Eve. The Sun unleashed an X5 flare, adding to the surprises. On February 21st, there were two X-class solar flares that erupted just seven hours apart, astonishing astronomers. Another powerful X-class flare, classified at 6.3, was unleashed by the Sun within 24 hours of these occurrences. This marks the most powerful flare emitted by the Sun in over half a decade. All three flares disrupted radio communications on Earth. As the Sun's activity reaches its peak, scientists anticipate more frequent X-class flares. Now we come to a crucial question. Does solar activity contribute to the increase in Earth's temperature, thereby causing global warming? The answer to this question lies in the relationship between solar activity and Earth's temperature, as depicted in this graph. The graph illustrates the relationship since 1880 up until 2020. The red line represents global surface temperature changes, while the yellow line depicts the Sun's energy received by the Earth in watts per square meter. The lighter lines indicate yearly levels, while the heavier lines represent the 11-year average trends. The graph indicates that both solar activity and temperature followed the same trend up until the 1950s, but something changed afterward. After the 1950s, the patterns of solar activity and temperature began to diverge. This divergence suggests that solar activity alone cannot be solely blamed for global warming. While solar activity may exert some influence, it's evident that other factors are also at play. High solar activity can potentially impact NASA's Artemis missions to the Moon. The guidelines for the Artemis mission are clear. Launches should avoid times close to solar storms. 
This caution is warranted due to the energetic particles from solar storms, which can damage electronic circuits and disrupt radio communication, making it challenging or even impossible to maintain contact with spacecraft. However, there is a silver lining to high solar activity. It tends to decrease the amount of galactic and intergalactic cosmic rays, offering better protection for satellites against these harmful rays. Therefore, during periods of intense solar activity, satellites are less vulnerable to damage caused by cosmic rays. On a more positive note, during the solar maximum phase, the intensity of auroras, known as the Northern Lights or Aurora Borealis, is heightened. These captivating light displays are formed when charged particles from solar winds collide with molecules in Earth's atmosphere. Observing these colorful spectacles is an extraordinary experience. The prime locations to witness auroras include Canada, Alaska, Iceland, Norway, Sweden, Finland, and Greenland, where they adorn the night sky with breathtaking beauty. As we anticipate the solar maximum, it prompts us to contemplate our place in the vast cosmos. It encourages reflection on our progress and vulnerabilities, urging us to consider the broader cosmic tapestry that binds us all together.